Hi friends, Robert here from Diverse Opals. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you to those of you who have been subscribing and leaving comments, it's appreciated. I hope you're all well. Um, today we are looking at a piece of material from Minterby. Um, you can see the characteristic sandstone on the back of this. Uh, there is a dark base to some degree on it and on top we have our white section and we've got some lines of or bars of color that are actually running through to the surface and today uh, I want to just clean this up um, judging by the way it appears in the rough I would say that the uh, section across here this side here is in fact waste um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do, because I can't see any major colour here that's worth pursuing, I think the first thing I'll do is in fact get onto the saw and we'll make a cut across here um, so we can concentrate on this area here. All right, we're, we're back from the grinder, and uh, just before I go any further, let me apologize for the background noise. It's raining here today. Uh, we've got some uh, rain on our iron roof, and it's a little bit noisy. And I'm still wearing the mask that I was using when I was grinding. Um, we just want, I just want to talk a little bit about what's happened with, it, with this piece. Um, I was hoping that there'd be a larger area of of color, which we can see there's not. The bars that we can see here are running up into the top or into this part of the stone. I've been taking this down, grinding this down, hoping to find that the, hoping that the bar will in fact widen up, which it has to some degree. So I've stopped and we've got wider bars here, which give it more color. There is this black section here, which I'm going to leave in the stone. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut from here to about here with the diamond saw and just to remove this because obviously this is nothing of any real consequence and once I've done that um, I will just tidy up a little bit on the grinder the sides well we finished on the uh, my grinder um, and I've taken I've taken away any imperfections that I thought may perhaps uh, affect the final outcome. Uh, as I said previously, this black dot is going to stay here. Um, we've just cleaned up the back a little bit. We're not going to do much more than that. And now we're going to go onto the sander. We've got a fairly even surface on the top. And what we'll do is just sand with our first grade, which is 240. I'm of course using a, a mask and using a dust extractor so uh, let's um, let's do this if our grinding stages have been done properly um, the sanding stages shouldn't take very long top's looking pretty good I'll just do the sides the back and what I'm going to do is just to put a 45 degree angle on the back it's what we might call a setting edge this makes it a bit easier for the jeweler to seat it in the setting so 
So we finished with our 240 grade. And I'm just going to change over now to 600. When we're looking during the sanding stages, I look from the top of the stone back to the light. I can see the reflection of the light in the top of the stone. And this helps me to see if there are imperfections, scratches, um, anything that I may have missed during my previous stages. Yes, we, I'm using Starker Matador paper. Um, German paper, this is my paper of choice. I've been using this for many years. Uh, you can find it on the description below the video. Okay, the back of the stone, I'm just gonna do the setting edge on, with 600 paper. And I'm also going to do, on the top of the stone now, I'm going to use this edge again, the same process, just to give it, just to take away the sharpness um, if uh, a jeweler is putting claws on the stone, a rounded surface would be good for him. Sharp edges can, can bring about chipping. So just go around the stone with 600 just to take off that sharp edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move on. I'm going to use a 1200 this time um, just to make sure that we've got a good finish. I'm looking for the reflection of the lights in the top of the stone. I want to see through that reflection imperfections in the top of the stone. Make sure that your buff is damp. It doesn't have to be saturated. It just has to be damp enough to hold the polish and enough to, enough to produce uh, some form of um, resistance when you're actually working across the stone. I'm just going to polish the edge around here because we've given it a slight chamfer. Uh, I'm not going to polish the back, the 1200 I'm happy as, as, a, as a final result. So we'll just polish this edge. Well we're back from the workshop and um, we've Retrieved ourselves a, uh, or salvaged ourselves a 13.4 carat stone from this piece of material from Mitabi. Um It's a bit unusual. It's not your full color piece, uh, but we can we can expect that from Opal. That's what makes Opal unique. Uh, and we've gone through all the normal processes that we we do in this particular um, uh, cutting uh, tutorial. And I hope that you've actually um, gained something from the information that we've provided and seen the techniques that we use and the products that we use. Um, I, I hope that you'll continue to watch our videos and to leave comments if you like. Um, I'm Robert for Diverse Opals. Thank you for watching.